the legendary Saul Canelo Alvarez has built a truly unique career. The 33-year-old Mexican has faced virtually all the strongest fighters of his time and conquered champions in four weight classes. It can already be asserted that with his achievements, Saul has secured a place for himself in the Boxing Hall of World Fame. Today, let's delve into the past and recall the most challenging bouts in the career of the red-headed Mexican. Saul Alvarez vs. Arislandi Lara The winner of the 2005 Boxing World Cup and multiple-time professional world champion Arislandi Lara was perhaps the most uncomfortable opponent for Saul throughout his career. The agile and technically savvy Cuban southpaw became a stylistic nightmare for the Mexican counterpuncher, whose abilities shine brightest against opponents adhering to an aggressive tactic. In this bout, Canelo had to lead the entire fight, trying to deprive the speedy and mobile Lara of space to maneuver. However, executing his plan proved challenging. The nimble Cuban either managed to evade most of Alvarez's punches or blocked them. Additionally, Lara did not forget to launch effective counterattacks, consistently outperforming the star favorite. Canelo achieved his greatest success in the middle of the fight, causing a cut to the Cuban boxer that hindered him for the rest of the match. The tense tactical confrontation where Saul acted more actively and Lara more precisely, thus more effectively, went the distance, leaving the fate of the fight in the hands of the judges. The Mexicans' star status predetermined the outcome of the bout. 117 to 111 and 115 to 113 in his favor, and 115 to 113 for Lara. After the fight, the Cuban boxer rightfully claimed bias on the part of the judging panel and demanded a rematch. However, he never got it. 9-16-2017 Saul Alvarez vs. Gennady Golovkin The battle between the Mexican idol and the legend of Kazakhstan left no fans indifferent. Golovkin took the initiative, acting much more aggressively, while Saul focused on defense. The Mexican boxer demonstrated excellent defensive skills, skillfully evading powerful Kazakh bombs. However, concentrating on defense, Alvarez acted too sparingly in the attack. Although the Mexican's efficiency was higher, his passivity led to Golovkin outworking him in most rounds due to greater activity and aggression. Both fighters showed an admirable ability to withstand powerful, well-placed blows. Throughout the fight, each of them landed significant hits absorbed by the opponent without apparent distress. Lovkin is a better boxer than people give him credit for too, so he's, he's boxing. Like, he, like right now, backing Canelo to the ropes. Right. 
Triple G hustle to cut the ring off. The counter fire. Worried about something big coming back from Canelo. His own. Immediately. It's helping Triple G to pile up an edge in CompuBox numbers. Doing well every time he takes Canelo into the ropes. There you go. He backs him up. But part two, I hope. But this is a really good fight right here. Little. I like the chances for a big fight here in the last six rounds tonight. Triple G breathing hard out of his mouth. Hard right hand by Triple G. Canelo wearing down Triple G. G or is goes by a little bit more. Getting counter anyway. You saw he got counter just then when he went to the back, when he went to the head. So it doesn't. Canelo missing upstairs. Numbers. There he is. And being more punches. Here's a terrific upper. Canelo throwing some bombs back. It's allowing Canelo to stay in the fight. When Triple G attacks with the right hand, watch what happens. 30 for Max, you gotta, you gotta put it on. Building a lead on his unofficial scorecard. But one trend is that Triple G is getting to Canelo. Looking away and establishing that Triple G gets to be the aggressor. That's the telephone pole jam. That's what serves him best. Golovkin thinks he hurt him with the right action. Beautiful defense, though. With land the right hand, it deflects the overhand right, left hook, right hand, the right hand on the top with the better punch. Then it deflects uh, the tenth. They combine to land the fight high, 26 power shots. That would suggest that Canelo needs a knockout. But there's no reason to believe him as he acknowledges it was on the belt line. Golovkin has him against the ropes again. Like he has won most rounds in the fight, but he started, and then it doesn't take that many more rounds for Canelo to be in the fight. What a chin triple G! Oh, good right hand, right hand by right fighters from an offensive standpoint in the world. Golovkin began to take over and showed his Eastern European. The spectacular confrontation was marred by judging arbitrariness. 115 to 113 for Golovkin. 114 to 114, and an incredible 118 to 110 for Alvarez. The author of these lines saw the victory of the Kazakh boxer with a score of 116 to 112. This is officially a draw. 915 2018. Saul Alvarez versus Gennady Golovkin, 2. The rematch turned out to be as bright and entertaining as the first confrontation, but the dynamics were completely different. Having thoroughly analyzed all the flaws in the first fight, Saul changed tactics, taking the lead, forcing the Kazakh boxer to retreat. Alvarez gained a significant tactical advantage as Golovkin is not as effective in fighting while moving backwards as in his preferred aggressive style. In most rounds, the Mexican looked preferable acting faster, sharper, and more aggressively. Meanwhile, Golovkin's hit-and-move tactics appeared relatively ineffective. Both fighters exchanged powerful blows, enduring them without visible consequences. Canelo is dictating the fight. Like he did the first fight. Has an edge and landed shot, according to Copy Box. Uh -huh. seconds to See go. that, guys? Yep. Can he waved him in. Now Harold Letterman, how did you score the first? Canelo, Canelo continues to throw. When the story of the fight, boy, after all, just do. Max, if he outstalks, if he stalks Triple G like this the whole, this type of fight, he's forced the issue and had his way when he wants. There's no way they're gonna give Triple G. It is hard jab by his. He landed and he catches the right hand straight back. Canelo answered right away because Canelo knows how to fight this style of fight, Jim. So that's the way Abel Sanchez sees it, and that's a clear sign he's trying to motivate her. The stalker. Hard right hand by Canelo. He's going to have to leave one of those iconic images for us in order to win that fight. This hard right hand for Golovkin. He needed that punch. They did. Great. Canelo comes back with his counter shots. Lands a right hand over the top. Triple G cut. The puncher became the stalker. The banger became the boxer. Understanding that he was losing, in the final rounds, Golovkin increased the pace and significantly added to the aggression. However, it was not enough to correct the overall picture in his favor. That was good right hand. From Alvarez, blocking it. In these last three rounds. You, you can't say enough about it. He looked like an old fighter having 
his way back into this fight and rocking Canelo. Talk about big drama show. This had... Fighters can do this, ladies and gentlemen. Being busy in the set. They trade uppercuts. Left took half lands for... The Mexican boxer rightfully secured the victory. Twice 115 to 113 and 114 to 114. The author agrees with the first set of scores. WBC, WBO, Ring Magazine middleweight champion of the world, Saul Canelo Four twenty, twenty thirteen. Saul Alvarez versus Austin Trout. The fight with the nimble American technician Trout was one of the most challenging in the career of the Mexican star. The American moved well around the ring, not allowing the aggressive opponent to land a powerful blow and effectively used his jab. It took Saul, who preferred more static opponents, some time to adjust to the style of this uncomfortable rival. In the first half of the fight, the American boxer was more effective in his actions. Alvarez, and you know, slightly below the 58 junior middle established the back. Most of doubt. It's definitely a tough round to score. Stairs, there's Canelo with the scores are of the fight. After the fourth brunt of that attack by this fight, trying to be the boss with the jab movement. Effectively, as it was earlier. Canelo using some beef fuddle Trout. Trout, though, lands the straight left to the sternum for Canelo. And one judge had it even. That was two body shots Trout yeah, throwing. Canelo doing a good job, though, of a very sweet overhand right. This round, he's kind of a stationary target. He's moving a little bit here, but he started the round. Sticks the jab. He's moving stop. The left hook to the butt hand. So what that oh, and the decisive moment occurred in the seventh round where Saul managed to knock down his opponent. There is Canelo Although Alvarez couldn't finish Trout, he achieved a psychological advantage. The American threw more punches, but the efficiency was on Alvarez's side, whose punches caused significantly more damage to his opponent. He saves it up. He, he, he goes to sprint, so he's not throwing her in this match. So that has bearing as well. The tense tactical confrontation lasted the full 12 rounds, and the judges unanimously awarded the victory to the hero of this article: 115 to 112, 116 to 111, and 118 to 109. The author is more critical of the red-haired Mexican: 114 to 113. <laughs> Five four twenty nineteen, Saul Alvarez versus Daniel Jacobs. The fight with former world champion Daniel Jacobs was not an easy stroll in the park for the great Mexican. The speed of the American boxer and his footwork created a noticeable imbalance in Saul's actions. Throughout the fight, Canelo played the role of the aggressor, while the larger Daniel responded with sharp counterattacks. Periodically, the American engaged in changing stances, confusing his opponent who relentlessly pressured him, working on different levels. Both boxers demonstrated a good ability to absorb punches, enduring powerful and well-placed hits without significant consequences. Right-hand miss. Jacobs goes on the offensive. And it's very good points by Sergio. Uh, Daniel Jacobs as well. 87-84. Canelo Sees Alvarez. the initiative. Over. Just touching him with that hook, but trying to get some power on it now. Wax him up. Again, this time, he's eating a lot of shots there. This time, moving Jacob. Jacobs back. Hit him with a hook. Cuffed him with the hook. Now the exchange. Let's see if they let it. I gotta go. I think we're seeing flashes of that right now. He, there's a there's a little change in, in, in Jacob's bravado right now. He's standing we're seeing the last hurrah here. We're letting it fly. Right hands to the body and the head. Canelo fighting off the rope. 
you have to make a decision whether you're just going to fight the same way. Jacobs leaning in, missed with the left hand. All right. Got that. Go around a couple times, ended on the. And is the premier boxing of the day. Golovkin getting a bad reception from fans here. Maybe we're we're seeing G Golovkin boy here. Maybe turn heel. He's the enemy here, that, that's for sure. Yep. But you know these fans would love to see these two can get past Daniel Jacobs. So far, it looks like he will do that, unless yeah, Jacobs... There's a look in his face, and he, the last round was a good round for him, too, so if he can have another big round here... Championship rounds. He steps in. It's a really good body shot there by Jacobs, but... as oh, we keep fine. Power jab. Just pace. You've won most every round. You could make a case. Chris Mannix... That even was close, though, Brian. These last few rounds, Daniel Jacobs... The scorecards might be a little surprising. And Jacobs fighting good in the inside right here. He's having a really good 11th time. Jacobs has been coming forward. Now he has Canelo against the ropes. Moving in, still in the soft ball stance, but now moves orthodox. At least trying to here while you're also commentating on the fight, and that's difficult. But this is one. Just not a lot of answer back from Canelo Alvarez. In Towards the final rounds, the pace of the fight noticeably decreased, and Jacobs acted more cautiously. However, in these moments, Alvarez simply outworked him, ultimately determining the outcome of the fight. Daniel Jacobs touches gloves. He brought what he could in what looked like just an The judges' scores accurately reflected how challenging this victory was for Saul. Twice 115 to 113 and 116 to 112. Now the unified middleweight champion of the world, Saul. Canelo Alvarez. After the fight, the loser showed himself a true gentleman, accepting the defeat unconditionally and congratulating Alvarez on a well-deserved triumph.